all creations of the Lord. They're all creations. It says that one of the things of Mashiach, that he will fill the whole world with the knowledge, awareness of God. Everyone will feel the creator. Everyone will feel important. Everyone will feel loved. <clears throat> everyone will feel they have a friend, that they have a, 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 a how do you say, the, a king that loves them, is creating them. Everyone in the world, it says the world will be filled with the awareness of God like this ocean is filled with water. Uh, there's no there's no ocean without water. Everybody will feel there's no world without God. Feel the, God will not be a religious idea anymore. God will be the most practical idea that can possibly be in the world. It'll give there won't be any more depression in the world, no more aggression, no more addictions, no more confusion. Okay. Until it happens, we can't be satisfied. But on the other hand, we have to be happy with what we've got. Yud Aleph. Chapter Yudalov. Okay, so this again is a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1992. We're talking, the Rebbe is talking about that in last week's Torah portion, Kitisa is contained in a capsulated way, and encapsulated in a capsule in us, in a, a seed. <clears throat> All the whole entire, uh, how do you say, gamut, is that a word like that, of creation, beginning, middle, and end. Everything there is and every detail in the world as a beginning and a middle and an end. Of course, like we said before, God is not part of the creation. God is the creator. So God does not exist like everything else exists. So God does not have a beginning, a middle and an end. But in relation to the world, God does have a beginning and middle and the end. Right? We say, I Rishon, I Achron, I Baladai, I am first, I am last. Okay, everything that's created in the world has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And sometimes the middle is very not nice. Sometimes the middle is very bad. Until you get to the end. When you get to the end, then you realize it was okay. Then you realize it was just part, it was a process of a thing. A process of a thing. The Rebbe didn't give this example, but I'm giving the example. You take a seed, right? You take a seed, a seed is very nice. A seed. You ever look at a seed? It's it's very it's very symmetrical and it's it's solid. A seed, it shines. You put a seed into the ground. So the seed, that's step number one. You put it into the ground. All of a sudden, in the ground, it starts to rot. It loses its, its completeness. It loses its wholeness. It loses its sem symmetry. And all of a sudden, it grows from this uh, a tree, a tree. That's the that's the end. So so to speak, this whole creation. These 5,783 years of creation since God created the world and a half since he created the world, as that's the whole creation, that's sort of like the seed rotting. It's going through all these different stages. And then the Geula, the Mashiach will bring the completion. That's going to be the, the tree with all the flowers, with all the, the fruits. We'll see how beautiful everything really was and how it was really worthwhile. Meanwhile, it's not so, the world is not so pleasant. But Let's hold off till we see the end, right? It's like trying to figure out what's going on in a movie. You see a, a three-hour movie, you watch two minutes in the middle of it, you try to figure out, you know, what's what's the purpose and where it is. And it... <clears throat> so from these three things that we talked about before, beginning, middle, and end, in the case of the Torah, we're talking about the first tablets. That's the beginning, Anochi. The first of the Ten Commandments, I am God. Then we have the destruction of the tablets because of the worshiping of the golden calf. That's step number two. That's pretty bad. And then we have step number three, the finality. And that is the giving of the second tablets. With the second tablets in it, they contain, and the Rebbe gave all these different reasons about the future redemption and how the... Now, just one more thing before we, we continue this, just so that everybody gets this thing straight. Mashiach, the goal of life is to work. The goal of life is to serve the creator, to be dynamic. That's life. Life is dynamic. Huh? Your, your heart is beating. Your lungs are going. The blood is circulating. right? Your nervous system is working. Your endocrine system is working. Everything is working. It's all moving, circulating. People meet each other. People contribute one to the other. They receive from one to the other. Mashiach is going to make the world infinitely more dynamic, people infinitely more healthy, 
no one's going to have problem with the circulatory system and the whole world will be like one big body. It'll all circulate. We'll realize that everything is what are you, symbiotic, one thing to the other. Everything depends on everything else. Everything contributes to everything else. Everything receives from everything else. It'll be infinitely more and even more. We'll realize that everything receives from God and that we give to God. There'll be a whole new player in this picture. Huh? <laughs> we won't be just, just the world. We'll see the creator. Everything will be... Okay, so that's the completion. That's the third stage. So Mashiach will make everything, right? The ideal of life is not just to sit on a mountain and not to be bothered, right? How do they call it? The, uh, uh, Professor Victor Frankl uses it, like the, the goal of psychiatry and everything is to have, um, <laughs> how does he use it? There's a good term that he uses and it just slipped my mind. Anyway, that everything should be, you know, static, calm, no problems. No problems, right? Love is just, life is just a dream. Nothing to get hung about, like is it? The Gimel and Yanim from these three, in Parshish Kitisa, I, what is the word he uses? I, <laughs> it's really, okay, sometimes I, I forget a word. Okay, from these three things that we talked about, homeostasis, oh, that's the word, homeostasis. Homeostasis means no problems. That the, was the goal of Freud, of, 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 of Adler, of all these, you know, the modern guys, the this, the, the young and everything, home, no problems. That's the thing of life, no problems. No problems. Professor Viktor Frankl sp uh, stresses and Hasidic certainly stresses that that's exactly the opposite of true. The, uh, the essence of life is to change what there is, to improve. There should always be a tension between what is and what should be. That's health. Not only in stasis, everybody is calm. You don't do anything. Life is just a dream. You do whatever you want. No problems. You don't have to defy yourself or defy your nature. Right? And that's what's going on now with this yoke, woke insanity. Right? Just do whatever you want. Whatever you want to be a man. You want to be a woman. You want to be God. You want to be this. Anything you want is okay. Right? It's okay. That's not the way it goes. It's, it's supposed to be improving the world. We have to improve the world. Prove the world. And a lot of times in ways that we don't necessarily want to. In the future, we will want to will want to improve. Everyone will see what la what's lacking, to get a little taste of what godliness is. And we'll realize that the world is sorely lacking godliness. That's what's missing in the world, not to do what we want, but to do what God wants. Okay, let's go. And in these three things in Parshas Tiki Tisa, we talked about beginning, middle, and end. There is also we can learn serving man of, the, of our service of God because that's the way we're here. From all the times. The word service, by the way, in Hebrew is the same word as to change. Ibud orot, avoda, same letters, ayin bait dalid, is also ibud, tanning hides. You need to take a hide from a, a cow and you just leave it, right? Just a, a cow that dies, the hide becomes hard like a rock, right? How do you make from that shoe? So you do ibud, you change the nature of it so that it becomes pliable and usable. And practical, the same thing we have to do with ourselves. We have to do avodah, means to change ourselves and the world around us in a positive way. That's what's called, that's why we're here, is in order to change the world. That's why God made the first man, to change the work on the world. The avdo it says. That's the idea, from this idea of beginning, middle, and end, we can learn something about how to serve God better. Let me just remind myself, yeah. Like we said before, should be Yota Parsha that because we're reading <clears throat> this once a year, this last week's Torah portion. So there is from this a learning, even though, right, <clears throat> that it's read only once a year, but it has a, it's a special, <clears throat> it has something to contribute to the year that no other Torah portion has. So therefore, it this we have to learn this message of beginning, middle, and end for everything in the whole rest of the year. How much more so when we're now on Shabbat Parshat Kitisa, that was last week, and we're reading it, what is it? What's the message? The Yehudi Nitan, to a Jew, is given the power. And again, the Jews are here to teach the world to do this also, but we have to, Jews have to get this first, because we're the chosen people, we're chosen by God to really serve him and show the world how to serve God. First of all, to show the world that there is a God and to show the world how, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Huh? 
It doesn't look like that, but that's the main job of Mashiach, to wake up the Jews, to start serving God, and to be Jews again. To act like Jews. Now, they already are Jews, but to act like, manifest. A Jew is given the power to, to affect everything from the beginning, the middle, and the end. Every, and everything, the beginning and the end and everything between them. From Aleph, from the first letter, until the tough, until the last letter. The world is created by God's letters, right? From the beginning of the creation to the end. Well, and in general, Kafish, as it's, the, the, as it's divided into these three letters, Aleph, Beit, and Gimel. Beginning, let's start off with these three things. We found the service every day. Immediately, when a person wakes up in the morning, every Jew, when he wake up in the morning, and the Rebbe wanted to, to make this by every human being in the world. The Rebbe wanted it to be taught in all the schools. The Rebbe wanted that there should be a moment of prayer in every school. If only this had been instituted, there, there was a lot of opposition to this, especially by Jews, especially by Jews. The Jews really op oppose this. The, the Rebbe wanted that there should be a prayer every morning in the schools, as well as giving allegiance to the flag. I hope they still do that. I don't know if they do it anymore. Giving allegiance to the flag. Also, you have to give thanks to your creator. What do you say? I am thankful before you, God, that you gave me back my soul. My, my soul didn't come back as a result of you know, Darwin or something like that. It's not a natural process. It's a miracle that God gave me back my soul. That's the beginning. When you wake up in the morning, you should say, number one, I'm coming from nowhere. That's Aleph. First, what comes before the number one? There is no number before one. There's nothing. Nothing. How, how did one come from nothing? How, as many nothings as you make, you're not going to make a one. Right? From the number one, you can get a trillion, a billion, whatever, just you know, multiply it. Multiply zero as many one times as Where does one come from? It's a miracle. That's when you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to feel Aleph, number one. That's the foundation and the beginning of the service of a Jew. Bittel, total surrender and thanks and gratitude to God. That's the Aleph of Anochi. That's like the first letter of the Ten Commandments. I, Anochi Aleph. I am God, your God. Odd until the whole existence, your whole existence, when I wake up in the morning, I feel that the Aleph, Ani, Mode Ani, what do we say in the morning? Grateful am I. That the grateful comes before my I, from myself. The Ani that my whole being is, first of all, gratitude to God. Gratitude comes before the ani, comes before me. That's the ani of a Jew. The ani, the, 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 the identity of a Jew is supposed to be, this is the word Jew itself, means giving thanks. Yehudi comes from hodaya, from giving thanks. But the mode, it's the same word, mode ani lefanecha, means I am giving thanks. Even how I am now, I just woke up in the morning. Nevertheless, I am totally united. My modem, my thanks comes before my ani, from before myself. This is how it is that Jews and God are totally one. We're supposed to bring this message to the world. <clears throat> so to speak, like a, like a television set, right? A television, people still have television sets, I don't know. But a computer, right? So you have on a computer, you have the screen on the computer. The screen on the computer, without the screen, nobody knows what's, what's, what's being, what message is there. The Jewish people are like the screen. We're supposed to let everybody know that there's God. In order to do that, we have to be in working order. What's the working order? We have to be surrendered. Just like the, the screen and the, the, your computer is surrendered to the laws of electronics or whatever it is, right? It has to be in working order, all the chords and everything. So <coughs> a Jew has to be surrendered to God, and then he's in working order, he can show. Well, Kamarum is like, it's, that's the letter Aleph. The letter Aleph itself is a Yud. A Yud, that's a Jew. That's a Yehudi, a Jew above. Yud. I mean, there's a Jew below, a Yud below. A Yud on the top. That's God, is the ten spherot of God, ten aspects of God. And there's a, a line that joins them. The line is a line of love, whatever. What you do as it's known, 
one second, excuse me, one moment, one moment. As is known, Shepshitos, that the simplicity of a Jew is every Jew is connected with the simplicity of the oneness of God. This simplicity of a Jew, the essence of what a Jew is, comes to be revealed when he says, Mode'ani, this giving of thanks to God. Surrender, if you want. Gratitude. And therefore, the custom of the Jews and all the Jewish people is even little children should say Mode'ani in the morning. And even more, even the word Mode, <clears throat> I am giving thanks, <clears throat> this is, this, so to speak, Tefela or Batela Ela'ani. That the whole, what's he saying? That the whole I, like I said before, the essence of my I is giving thanks. Shekena Iker, because the main thing is the Tevis Ani. The main thing here is the me. I'm waking up in the morning, right? It's There's me. Kimiyachi in your mission. So as soon as you wake up in the morning, every single, first of all, you have a person. Here I am. Who's waking up? Me. For the, the with, with your 248 positive limbs and your 365 the blood vessels, but also, and after that is the ani, you start to do things. You start to say, mode, ani, so first of all, you wake up, before there's any words, before there's, any, oh, there's consciousness. And then you say, grateful am I. Nevertheless, we say, mode, ani, what does it mean? If we don't say, ani, mode. The main thing is the me, right? There's me, that, that's the fact that God wants me to be here. He wants me to wake up. I'm the one that's speaking. But nevertheless, what's the first thing we do? We say, grateful am I. So much is my I, the I, the, the ego of a Jew connected to the creator, <clears throat> that even when he wakes up in the morning, the first thing is, ani <clears throat> is, right? Old Rebbe Shani, Moser Shi'ur, is the Ani, Afal Pekin, nevertheless, the Ani comes immediately after the giving thanks which comes before it. Okay, so what's the Rebbe saying? Let's, in short language, there's a custom. You can look in the Shulchan Orach, in the Jewish law book, that when a Jew wakes up in the morning, and it should be every human being waking up in the morning, that we say, Grateful am I to you, God, the living creator, the living king, that you gave me back my soul right, in mercy. Your, <coughs> your faith in me is great. That's what you used to say in the morning. You can look and see. Let's just take the first two words. Grateful am I. The main thing is my eye. I woke up in the morning. God wants me to be a person. He's creating me. But nevertheless, the main function of my eye, of myself, is to be grateful to God. That's the first essence, if you want to say, of what a Jew is. After that comes the blessings in the morning. Now, in order to understand what I'm talking about, you have to get a Jewish prayer book, a genuine Jewish prayer book, and translated into English. Chabad has one. There's a lot, a lot of this. Farty, there's there's uh, uh, from the, the what is it? The Litvisher way and the, the different prayer books. All of them have the same thing. But some of them have a little bit different order. Sometimes the words are a little bit different according to the great holy people that arranged it. That's the, the <clears throat> just like every person is different. So the prayer books are different, but they're different in in very minor details. After you say this Moda'ani, Grateful am I. Then there is what's called the blessings in the morning. Fifteen, let's say, blessings in the morning. And you give thanks to God that you that you uh, that you have eyes, that you can move, that you can stand up, that you that you're providing, that you can walk, that you can, God provides us what we need. <clears throat> then after that, you make the blessings in the morning. Then after that, you pray. You pray. This includes, and then after that. You, after you pray, you should sit down and learn the Torah a little bit. And this kolels the aleph, the aleph of the, of the service of the day. Then after that comes the bait. Second step, right? So what does a person do? He wakes up in the morning, he says the blessings, he prays, he learns Torah. That's the beginning. Now he's connected to God. That's step number one. Step number two. You go to work. 
who Yotze from the Beit Knesset, he goes out from the place of prayer and the place of learning into the world. That's already step number two. That's the bait of Breshit. Like Adam, right? God created Adam, put him in the world to work. La Sota to do work for the sake, for the rest of the day. And Egbem Mina Derech Eretz. Hitlap Shuto, you have to be in, involved in the world and do your job properly. If you're a doctor, you have to be a proper doctor. You can't say, you know, the, I'm praying to God. You have to do your job. If you're a lawyer, you have to be an honest person. You have to do your job. You have a business. You have to be pleasant to the, you have to have a good products and you have to be pleasant and you have to be honest. You have to this. Okay, that's the rest of the day. <clears throat> that's step number two. <clears throat> and after that, at the end of everybody's day, we have the gimel. That the third step, what's the finishing? This is when a person sits and he makes a cheshbon nefesh. He makes an accounting of everything that he's done. Hakol, sachakol, of everything and all the deeds and all the thoughts that he's done. You take one minute and you sit and you think, what are the good things I did today? What are the things that have to be improved today? And he does this, when does he do it? In the evening prayer. Until it finishes the evening prayer. We pray three times a day, right? Evening prayer. Ach tzaddikim Yerushamecha. The, the tzaddikim will know your name, will announce, will, will, will like, uh, give praise to your name, giving praise to God. But Gamar Vashlemus Avoda, this is the real finishing of the day until when we say Shema Yisrael in the evening. And we give ourselves totally to God before you go to sleep. Okay, so we have three steps. One thing, you wake up in the morning. Everything is in front of you. You came from zero. Step number two, you came from zero. You, 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 you give thanks to God. You pray. You learn Torah. Step number, that's step number one. Step number two, now it's up to you. You have to do things. Step number one, you give yourself over to God. Step number two, you do. You work in the world. You deal with people. Step number three, you give your soul back to God. Before you go to sleep. That's the before you go to sleep, you think, what are the things I should improve? How could I do better? How could... Alder says, similarly, there are, these three things are in the service of a Jew in the course of his life, not just in the course of every day. First of all, a person, uh, first of all, the beginning of service, the end of the service, and the completion of service. <clears throat> <clears throat> a person is born, a person serves God his whole life, and the last moments of a person's life. I mean, probably everybody, everybody's watching this, obviously, is alive, but you've probably come to the conclusion that people don't live forever, right? I mean, you've seen it, even though we're doing pretty good up to now, so who knows, maybe we'll just continue, but Allah has come, how much more so? Let's talk about the whole entire creation. Our generation is the last generation of exile, and the first generation of the redemption. After there have been so many deeds and work and prayers and efforts and self-sacrifice of the Jewish people in the course of <coughs> all of these 3,300 years since we received the Torah, now, says the Rebbe, we finished. Now we can stress that the main thing is the completion of all of our work. We're in step number three, to bring the gimel, the geula, and meet it for shlema b'pol mamish. Now, says the Rebbe, is the time everything is going to turn over. Right? All the confusion that we see in the world going on now, and it's really confusing. I don't think there's ever been a time that's been more confused than right now. Nobody knows who's good. Nobody knows who's bad. Everything is bad is good, and good is bad. It's just total, total confusion <clears throat> going on in the world now. It's only a preparation for the true, and you say stability, that's going to come afterwards. And the true stability is that everybody's going to realize how much God loves them. Everyone's going to realize that they have a special job to do in the world, a special part to play in this amazing, <clears throat> complicated, what is a Swiss watch, which is called creation. Everybody has their own thing to do. And when everybody does it, then there's going to be peace and pleasantness and, and prosperity, and there will be an end to all diseases and an end to all confusion and, and lying and cheating. 
And the Rebbe says, here we're here, we're, we're here now. I, if you look around and see, it seems that we're definitely, you know, things are really going bad. So it says, okay, we're, we're in the end stages. It's like, you know, in the symphonies where they have the, the what does they call it? The cadenza. I don't know what it's called. In the end of a symphony. We're right at the end of the symphony. And everybody's just playing and all, all the violins and they're all moving. And all of a sudden it's going to be, ta-da, and that's it. And then we'll clap. Oh, then we can appreciate author, author, the, the God himself will appeal, will appear, and we'll see that God is creating us. It's not just somebody standing up on the stage. And that we can be his partners. <clears throat> and that's what's happening now. But it's been going on. The right he made this speech 30 years ago. So I, I mean, personally, I think it's a little bit exaggerated. You know, it's taking so long, but God will appear to everyone and explain that uh, woe to those people like me that think that the uh, that the uh, you know it's exaggerated. What God does is always good, but I wish it would stop. It has to stop already. There's too much confusion. How to say there must be some way out of here? For sure, 100. percent There's no doubt that any instant now. We'll hear the Lubavitcher Rebbe is here. And all of a sudden, everybody will just say, man, you know, I was really wrong. Let's see what we really should do. You know, how can we really make world peace, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It'll happen. Okay, let's do the Yom Yom now for today. Here we go. Let's stop this, stop the share. And one minute, stop the recording.